Good morning. Good morning. Hmm. It's not working. Let's try this. Uh, first one. God manifest. Um, it's time for offerings. Just wanted to make a quick statement and actually read something that God put on my heart this morning and share it with everyone. Um, please keep supporting the ministries and ministers you've been supporting. They depend on your generosity to sustain the ministry. Obviously, the provision is through God, but we give according to what God puts on our hearts. So thank you for your support of God Manifest. Thank you for your support of Scott Windrum and Shannon Windrum and their ministry. Thank you for supporting the ministries around the world. Thank you that you, you are going to give it today according to the Spirit and you're going to give boldly. Just wanted to start this off with, uh, with reading this. This may seem like somber times in the world. I'm proud to be a Christian. I'm proud to be an American. I am proud to be a Texan. Governor Abbott, Greg Abbott, took a bold Texas-sized stance to yes, allow and encourage the assembly of worshipers all over our state to gather to worship as one loud, bold, and fearless voice. We will worship our God regardless of our circumstance. God bless Texas. God bless our nation. God bless the world. God bless our leaders. God bless our church and all the creations as we unify today, we Come shout, on. we will keep our worship on. Yeah. Today, as people of the world gather in their churches or in the living room to connect with the body of Christ, we must keep the praise of worship on. As you worship today, where, wherever God has given you the peace to worship, I encourage you to worship fervently. Yes. We are one body, and I believe that when the body is unified, the body will thrive. With so many uncertainties in the world today, I am certain of these 20 things. God is still enthroned. God is still the victorious king. God still heals. God is still all powerful. God is still love. All things are still possible through God. God still re responds to worship. God still answers prayers. God still forgives. God still provides. God still pursues. God still sees, God still cares, God still does the impossible, God still empowers us, God is still omnipresent, God is still amazing, God still gives wisdom, God still works miracles, yes. and God still reigns. Yes. Today, wherever you, wor you, wherever and however you gather to worship, we must keep our worship on. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of, go of good re repute, if there is any excellence in anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Jesus Christ, not me, but Jesus Christ, practice these things and the good and, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Y'all, we just have to keep worshiping. Yes. We are not moved by fear. We are not moved by circumstance. We are not moved by need. We are moved by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone. We're Christians. Amen. We're Americans. Yes, we're, we're Texans. Yeah. We're bold. We're proud. We're, we're fervent. We're powerful. Yes, we are. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Nothing is impossible through us because... He who, who does miracles, signs, and wonders live in us. Amen. Well, God bless y'all as we welcome Scott and Shannon, two of our close friends, fathers and mothers in the faith to us. We love you. Come on up. Thank you. God bless you. Wonderful. Well, greetings. In the name of Jesus, that powerful name above every name that is named, heaven, earth, or under the earth. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. To the glory 
of God the Father. We are so glad to be here today. It's good to be the church yes, and to be in church and to be a part of what God's doing. You know, the kingdom of God is alive and well on planet Earth. Amen. And so we're going to rejoice in the kingdom and uh, do those things that God wants us to do. And uh, I would like you to turn your Bibles this morning to Luke chapter 11. And uh, we're going to read a portion of scripture where Jesus talks about the light. We're going to start. <clears throat> Luke 11, is that what I said? Yes. And starting with verse 33, Luke eleven thirty-three, No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it away in a cellar or under a basket, but on the lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. The eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is clear, your whole body also is full of light. But when it is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Then watch out that the light in you is not darkness. If therefore your whole body is full of light, with no dark part in it, it will be wholly illuminated as when the lamp illumines you with its rays. Powerful. No one after lighting a lamp puts it away in a cellar or under a basket. This morning God has given us his light, the light of the kingdom, the light who is Jesus Christ. It says in the word that he is, his, his, his light is the life of men. So we have the life of Jesus within us. In this scripture, Jesus is explaining how we express the things of God by what we see. He said, if your eye is clear, your whole body is full of light. If you close your eyes right now, what you see is darkness. That's because your eyes closed. If it were bad, if it were blind, you would see that all the time your body would be filled with no light because there's nothing entering it. So when Jesus starts to speak here about this, he's letting them know that for the light to shine, it has to be on a lampstand. It has to be exposed. And what he's, he's giving the analogy that if you put it down in a cellar, down in a bunker somewhere, and if you cover it up, then the light that you have really is displaying darkness. He says, if the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Or I can say this, to what extent is that darkness influencing you? So we have Jesus, and I'm glad that he is all to us that he says he is to us. Amen. But the message the Lord's given me is this. Let who Jesus is to you become as effective through you. Because just so knowing that Jesus loves me and he cares for me and I worship and praise him for what he's done for my life. The idea is for me not to hide it and to conceal it. Because in hiding and concealing it, it doesn't mean I'm going to hell or I'm, I'm a messed up person. But what it means is the very light that others need to see, they're not able to see it. So I'm displaying darkness just because there's a lack of light. So we don't hide our light. And I think in these days is what God wants us to understand. We are being challenged right now Amen. to not hide our light. Yes. And as the churches are choosing not to meet in certain buildings and we meet in homes, we still need to be very cautious of the fact that we're not supposed to conceal it. But we're supposed to still be out there. Jesus said that we would lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. And so in the Old Covenant, and that's what we need to distinguish between the Old and New Covenant. In the Old Covenant, if you touched a sick person, you would be defiled. Right. So when the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, she was breaking the law. But out of him flowed virtue, and she was healed. So in the New Covenant, it's supposed to go the other way. It's not that we touch people who are defiled and they defile us, but we touch people to get healed, and they're healed through us. And so God is really bring us uh, into a wonderful challenge to be participants in our faith instead of just spectators. Recently, and I've been teaching a, a lot about this, I believe it's very important to understand is that there's a difference, difference between trust and faith. Trust can be passive and silent. But faith is active and vocal. So when we say, Lord, I just trust you. Now let me say this. Trust is, is the most wonderful default position of the human soul. <laughs> We better start with the fact, I trust you, Lord. 
uh, I'm not going to preach on it today, but mention in Second uh, Chronicles 20, where Jehoshaphat, he looks to the Lord, he says, we're surrounded by this great multitude, and we don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. So what are you saying? We trust you. But I'm saying trusting in the Lord is the bottom line, but it's not the fulfillment of everything God wants to do. And you might say, what do you, what do you mean? Well, it says in, in uh, Hebrews 4 that we're supposed to come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You see, if, if we're trusting the Lord, I don't want you to understand, I believe in trusting the Lord. I trust the Lord and so do you. But trusting the Lord, we can still be in a place of apathy. We can still be in a place of just sarah, sarah, whatever will be, will be. Uh, we're along for the ride. We don't know what God's going to do, but we trust him anyway. Now, I believe that's a great default position, but it's not the best position. Because God wants us to be participants. In other words, we don't, just don't tell God how great he is. He wants to show his greatness through us, which means we have got to be a part of the action. So faith is not passive. It's active and it's vocal, which means this. It changed my whole view when I heard someone say, see faith as a verb rather than a noun. Because you can say, I trust in the Lord, and here we are. And I see that what has happened over the last few weeks, if we're not careful, we will be in a, a default position of just trusting the Lord and hanging on for dear life and hoping it works out and hoping everything doesn't go to hell in a handbasket and just wishing and hoping and, you know, just kind of, we don't know what to do, but God's in charge and we're going to trust him. And I say, that's a good, that's a good place to start. But what God wants us to do is actually be involved. It says in, in Daniel about those who know their God will do great exploits. We're supposed to be right there on the front line being active, being participants. And uh, this scripture right there shows me that if, if we allow ourselves to put our lamp in front like this, to, to be there for everybody, what happens is we come into confrontations with darkness and we start to see that we are right here Knowing that all things are possible with God, that's, that's the trust. That's the mercy part. But then, Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. So what happens is, rather than just acknowledging what God says, we start to acknowledge what God says by what we say. This morning, we were, as we were coming here, I was thinking about how the Lord has made this so real to me, is that we start with the fact, God, we're waiting on you. We want to see you to move. We want to hear your voice, right? But what, what, what's, what's the Lord really after? How does what I'm going to share with you have any practical practicality to it? What I'm asking you and myself to do, why don't we move to a place where we respond to God because as we're telling him we want to see him move, he says, I want to see you move. As we're telling him, we, we just want to hear what you have to say. He says, I want to hear what you have to say and see if it agrees with me. Lord, uh, Lord we... <laughs> We just trust you. And I'm saying, yeah, we trust you. But we don't just trust you. We trust you. And then along with that, it's accompanied by faith that overcomes the world. And see, what happens is when we are looking to the Lord saying, well, you're God and I'm not, which is a good thing, right? He's God and we're not, okay? But we start to see things from a, maybe from God's perspective. And we're just talking about, Lord, uh, I was thinking this morning, we just want to... We want to come into your presence. Don't you think that's an awesome thing? You, want to come you know what the Lord told me this morning? You might have to check it out with the Bible and everything. But the Lord spoke to me as clearly as I'm speaking to you. He said, I want to come into your presence. Now that what? He says, look, you're sitting here saying you want to come to my presence like that's a big deal. The blood of Christ has made access. I'm, he says, I'm never saying, you know what? Just do what you need to do and say the right words and you can come to him. He says, you're in my presence already. He says, the real key is, I want you to align yourself with me and say, Lord, I'm going to let you come into my presence. He said, where is that in the Bible? Well, see, James talks about that the Holy Spirit jealously desires to possess us. So we say, Lord, I just want more of you. This, see, look, and, and this is just my personal opinion. This helps me that I really don't need more of God. He's given me all things pertaining to life and godliness. So we say that, but really, what's the secret? See, if I say, Lord, I just want more of you, I'm putting it on him to give him more of me. I mean, to give him, me more of him. Does that make sense? Lord, I'm counting on you to give more of you to me. He says, listen, I've given you everything. 
the real key is, it's not my responsibility to give you more. It's your responsibility to give me more of you. <laughs> so just like submit. Just let your whole body be filled with light. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall give what? Life to your immortal bodies. You got a mortal body on today? I do, right? <laughs> So God, I just acknowledge it. What God is wanting to do is to own our faith. And we become participants by owning the words that we say. See, faith is not a matter of us convincing God. See, God knows our hearts. So in James it says, I'll show you my faith by my works. But in Romans chapter 4, it says that God justified Abraham apart from works. Well, which is it? Well, faith towards God is God doesn't need to see you do anything. He knows your heart. But people need to see you do things to believe you're credible. Right? So James didn't say, I'll show God my faith by my works. He said, I'll show you as a human being my faith by my works. So whether we like it or not, people assess the value of our Christianity by what we say and what we do. Right? That's, that's this way rather than this way. So vertically, I'm cool. God loves me. I'm the son of God. You're a blessing. And you righteous in Christ. And all that. But here, this is where the proving ground is. In this whole situation that we're right now in the United States of America. Yeah, we can say, Lord, we don't know what to do. And we're calling on you and all these things. But see what happened with Jehoshaphat when he said, our, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. What happened? Well, after that, then the prophet spoke. <laughs> Here's what you do. It wasn't like I said, well, just trust me and you're, hang on. It's going to be a crazy ride. No, it says, now that you've given me your whole attention and you're, Focused on me. Now, I'm going to show you what to do. You know, even in the parting of the Red Sea, in Exodus, so well, look, God says, be still and see the salvation of your God. Right? But he told Moses, put that rod over the water. Was, I'm going to use you. So, as we say, Lord, we're just, what, what, what do we do with this, this virus? Lord, please save us. Protect us, Lord. I think those are good prayers. But maybe the Lord wants us to speak to that thing. Yes. And say, you know, what, uh, you, I call it the beer virus. Coronavirus, whether you were made by China, by deep state, or Satan himself, we address you now in the name of Jesus. I command you to let go of our nation yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. You let go of our economy. Yes. You let go of our children and grandchildren in the name of Jesus. Yes. We command you. To let go in the name of Jesus. Yes. Now what we just did then, we moved from an apathetic attitude to an authoritative attitude. Now we're, oh, we're taking up the mantle. And see, I believe that right now what the Lord is wanting us to see is that, yeah, we can, we can have that default position, Lord. You know, it, it sounds, in a way, it sounds uh, very humble to say, Lord, we take no responsibility for this. Because you're in charge and you're God. You sit in the heavens and you do whatever you please. I'm quoting scripture. But see, I, I don't need to quote that scripture at the expense of me not being a participant. So God says, okay, your trust is me. Okay, Lord, what do I say now that I trust you? What do I do in faith? And it says in 1 John 5, 4, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Even our faith. We start to own our faith. Um, just recently, I was thinking about as a pastor, uh, the Lord showed me, you know, you, we can look to the Lord and we're, Look at that song, this remember your people, remember. Okay, that's a great song. But you see, I can say, Lord, you said, I remind you today of what you said. I can say that in faith, or I can say that as an accusation against him. Lord, everything's going crazy. Things are looking nuts. But Lord, you said, so where's my, we don't understand. You said, and God says, listen, I know what I said. What do you say about what I said? See, the, the test isn't on God. It's on us. See, look. I'm going to believe. Okay, but if you believe and you have faith, what's going to happen? You're going to do something and say something. Uh, so if I tell you, hey, uh, Shannon and I are, are believing for this, that, and the other to happen, right? We have faith for that. Well, once I use the word faith, not trust, use the word faith, any close friends can say, well, Scott, what are you, what are you and Shannon doing about it? What are you and Shannon saying about it? You see, because once you use the word faith, you've, all, you've right now described something that's going to be active and vocal. And the Lord spoke to my heart last year and said, I want your words in, that you say in, in prayer, or the, the words that you say in public, 
to match the words that you pray in private. So what happens is we can say, Lord, we're just trusting you. But then we can pray, pray for three, three hours or whatever it is and go outside and tell people, no, I've been praying, but it ain't working, you know. You know, it looks like God's not listening. And so we, we speak all this unbelief and wonder why, as we dismantle our prayers, that things aren't happening. So I believe right now the thing that is so uh, challenging, and yet it's a good thing, because the body of Christ is going to have to rise up to the occasion. Not just sit there like a bump on a log and say, well, you just don't know what's going to happen. So you might think, well, do you know what's going to happen? I don't know everything that's going to happen. But I think the Lord is, is speaking to my heart saying, I want you to speak to that mountain. I want you to say what you think about this virus. Haven't I given you authority? You said, God, only you have the authority. No, no, no. I've given you all authority that you need. Authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. So, yeah, he has all authority, but it's not locked up in heaven. It's, it's given and distributed into you and me as we each all have the measure of faith. And then we say, okay, here's the deal. We're going at it. So we can pray and petition God. I believe that. Uh, Philippians 4. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Come to God with your request, with thanksgiving, right? And the peace of God will, uh, will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. But see, what happens is uh, the enemy of our soul doesn't mind if we just pray. What he's concerned about is that we'll start to proclaim. Yeah. And, I, and I'm all for prayer meetings and everything. But right now, I'm not interested in just going to a prayer meeting where we ask God to do everything. I would rather just have a, a proclamation meeting. Yes. Now I'm yes. coming. And, and, and I believe there's a, there's a time that we need to repent, okay? But I don't think right now it's that we've got to get all into, man, we're sorry, uh, we shouldn't have done that, Lord, we turn to you and all. I think what God's trying to say, look, okay, repent, and then repeat. <laughs> it says, I'd like, to, I'd like you to repeat what I say. Start to speak to the, the darkness. Speak light into the, to this hole. Speak provision. And I believe we need to bless our economy. And the more we listen to all these pundits on the TV and everything, say, oh, it looks like maybe we're going to recession. Here we go. And we think, well, you know, you just never know what God's going to do. Well, wait a minute. What is God doing? What is the, the enemy doing? It says in my favorite verses in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, you remember, you, you know, of Jesus, of Nazareth? who was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So this silent enemy, or this invisible enemy, that the president keeps talking about, is not of God. And I think when we try to mix it up, so maybe God's trying to teach us something. Yeah, maybe he's trying to teach us to live by faith and speak in faith. <laughs> You know, saying, well, you know, all the Egyptians, you know, they had the ten plagues that came on. I know, but guess where the children of Israel were? They were living in the land of Goshen. Yes, right. When it was dark with the Egyptians, it was light with them. Yes, it was. Now, what God is doing, you see, listen, I've given you the new covenant. See, in the old covenant, it says in Psalms, they limited the Holy One of Israel. Right? Well, we can do that too, but even more so, we tend to limit ourselves. And so we say, Lord, we, we're just all messed up and God, we're a little confused and we don't know why the, the government's doing this or, or the, the enemies do We don't know what's going on, but Lord, we're just, we're just along for the ride. <laughs> God says, well, why don't you wake up and smell the coffee? It was, I want you to prophesy in a pit, prophesy a ladder and climb out. It was, I want you to get with it and say, we're going to speak those things that be not as though they are. But see, as long as we believe or we function in such a way that all this, this, these attributes of faith and glory and miracles are locked up in heaven. And again, I'm all, I mean, I, I love worshiping God, don't you? But just because we worship God doesn't release it. There are a lot of people today who are worshiping God, right? They trust God and, and God loves it. He loves worship. But worship doesn't cause you to demonstrate the things of God in power. Not automatically. There has to be a willingness on our part. So you know what? When we leave here today, you know what I'm saying? 
we have an opportunity to look at each other, look at our friends, look at our spouses and say, now what are we going to do? Not, not, not what is God going to do? Because God has already done, I believe, what he wants to do. And yet in history, we're sitting here thinking, well, I wonder if this is it. And already the people are coming up, the pundits are, well, you know, the Bible said this would happen. And, you know, I guess time's up. <laughs> I mean, we've got to face reality now. All this crazy stuff, somehow God's saying, I'm going to close the curtain. And you are going to be a part of it. <laughs> My son, Brian, he asked us a few years ago. He went to a church and he says, yeah, they talked about Jesus and they talked about the end of the world. He says, I don't understand. Why did God bring God cause me to be born just in time to let me know it's over? <laughs> I, thought, I thought, there you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Too bad for you, right? But see, again, if we consider the fact that many, many, many people over the years, I've already been through about five ends of the world now that I'm 67. I've lived already three generations that said it was over. And I'm just going, hey, the emperor has no clothes. I believe what we need to do is look up. How many believe there's, there's hope for your children in the future? Yes. Now, not just going to heaven. This people, you tell a five-year kid, you know, you get to go to heaven when you die. You excited? He says, I don't know, can't even read yet. And so we're <laughs> We want him, him to be happy that at five years old he gets to go to heaven. He can't even relate to that. He's looking at a whole lifetime before him. And what people are doing now is they're pretty much saying, you know, this is going to change America forever. Man, we're not going to have anything. We're going to ride bicycles and be in long food lines and there won't be anything on the shelves. And, you know, and, and people prophesy. This guy says, stop it. Stop it. You, you want your kids to live in, 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 in that kind of thing? God said, yeah. People say, well, we can't help it if it's God's will. See, we've got to somehow design, design ourselves in such a way that we decide, hey, I don't believe this is God's will. And not just say that as a theological statement, I don't believe this is God's will. But now speak to those things. Yes. That virus, you've got to go in the name of Jesus. You let go of our government officials. You let go of our nation. And I believe, what if we did that? What if all of us in this room did it? What if everybody who's seeing this or listening to this on the internet. What if we did that? But see what happens. We're fighting voices from the church, from people of God, that are saying the opposite. Alright? I've been hearing this for years. And I tell you what, I believe that God wants us to restrain ourselves from speaking those things that are not right. There's a story of this, this, one, this man who was at the right hand of the king, I think of Samaria. They were eating uh, dove's dung and donkey heads and Everything was expensive. And the prophet said, you watch. Real soon, in a few days, we're going to have food again. It's going to be prosperous. And the man who, who the, the king was with, who leaned on this guy, he said, even if God opened up the windows of heaven, could this be? Well, these, these four lepers are outside the wall, and they're figuring, you know what? We're going to die anyway. Let's go to the enemy camp and see if they'll feed us. Worst thing to do is kill us, and then right. all the misery will be over. They didn't even move in faith. They just went out there. They got there, and God has scattered all the armies. They're going through the tents. They're eating leg of lamb and you know, having a, a great ball. And they looked at you and said, you know what? God might really get kind of ticked at us if we don't go back and tell them about this. <laughs> Maybe we ought to. And so they went back, and they told the people. Everybody's gone. There's food and everything. Well, they, the people got so excited, they, they, they ran out of the gate just doing a, 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 a dash to get there. Well, guess who's at the door to let him out? The guy that was the helper of the king. And he got trampled. There you go. He's the only guy I know in the Bible that got healed to death. <laughs> anyway, but God, but God has this opportunity for us, and I just hope that you're excited as I am, that, man, this isn't just, uh, we're going to be the white knuckle club, club and hang on, you know, for dear life, but we open up our hearts and our hands to those that need us, and we start to, at times, be confrontational, it's okay to do that. See, some things are coming out of me that I haven't seen in a while, in other words, it's because it's the time in which you live, that this is an opportunity. You were built for storms. Not just for the calm. You were built for this. The other morning I shared with some of you that uh, I went to a, a, 
HEB and they weren't open till eight. And then we, so we went down to Kroger and they were gonna open at seven. So uh, Shannon stayed in the car and I was gonna wait out there and look at the situation. And sure enough, it didn't open up for 15 more minutes. Well, a guy comes out of the truck and he and I are standing there and I just tried to encourage him. He said, well, it's not, so it's gonna work. And I said, you know, we gotta trust the Lord. He said, there are 3,000 gods people worship and nobody knows. I said, I know. And man, we, we went at it, man. <laughs> I mean, we're walking through the parking lot He's trying to convince me. And I said, I'm not letting this guy off the hook. He said, there are 3,000 guys. I said, listen, I, I said, the only one that died for me is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead for me. I said, none of the other, these other clowns did. <laughs> and so we're going at it, man. I mean, I would like to say I led him to the Lord, but it finally ended. He said, well, there are 3,000. Nobody knows. I said, I know. He said, why? Well, you know, I don't know. I said, well, too bad for you. And I walked off. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'd like to give you a testimony. I led him to the Lord, but... Didn't quite work that day. Maybe I'll meet up again, waiting to get into Kroger next week or something. But, uh, but what I'm saying is something rose up in me. Say, you know what? I'm, not, I'm going for it here. This is, this is too exciting to let this go. You know? And it, it thrilled me because out there in the parking lot, much more happens sometimes in a parking lot than it does in a church service. Yes, right. Why? Because we're releasing it out there. God says, let me be as real as I am to you in my relationship with you, let it be as, as much as I am to you, let it be a reality of who I am through you. And boy, I tell you, that's just, Captain, that's, I guess that would be the message of the sermon. It's to you and through you. That's what it's all about. And so I am so excited that, that, uh, that we are the covenant people of God. We're hid with Christ in God and we're more than conquerors of him that loved us. And, um, we're going to prophesy. You remember that when Ezekiel was challenged by, by God, showed him the valley of dry bones. God says, can these bones live? Of course, what uh, Ezekiel did, he went to the default mode. Lord, you know. <laughs> yes. Right? I mean, you know. What's God do? Now that you know that I know, and you trust me, we're going to shift now from just a tr place of trust and acknowledgement of my sovereignty into you being a participant. Prophesy out of those bones. Prophesy that the Spirit of God come. And those bones came together, a great rattling. And then the, the sinew came on. And then the skin came on, stood up a great army of God. But he was involved. He was right there on the, on the edge of it. And you and I are on the edge of things that are happening. I think we can say, you know what? What's God showing you? And that's kind of an interest. That's a, that's a loaded question. What's God showing you? And I want to encourage you that in all the midst of God showing you, you need to have more faith and be a better husband, be a bigger giver. You know, usually when people say God's showing them something, it's something negative that they need to do or take care of. Maybe God wants to move us out of a thing of navel-gazing and self-analysis into a place saying, you know what? God says, Go speak to that truck driver. What, get off your blessed assurance and go do something that's going to give me glory. Go over there and talk to that young lady. I'm about to heal her. And we start to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And we're always in a yes, Lord moment. <sighs> that's life. And I think one thing that is really going to help us over the next few weeks is to keep on speaking and not be afraid because God says, I have many people in this city Last week, I ended a service that we were in Belton, Texas. And the Lord gave me a scripture about the man who fears the Lord. And I was reminded of it today. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who trusts in the Lord. He will not fear evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but Shannon and I have heard some bad news this week nationally, personally, some, you know, things that, I want to say bad news, things that are not seemingly favorable. And I believe that uh, right now is the time to say, you know what? We believe. Paul said, having the same spirit of faith, therefore we speak. And so I say, Lord, I'm going to speak your word. He says, don't hold back. The more audacious and radical you can be, the better it will be. Someone says, well, if we speak all this stuff and nothing happens or very little happens, 
Well, if you believe God for a million dollars, well, I'm going to get a million. I've got a hundred thousand. What if you believe for something to happen, a real miraculous? And it didn't get miraculous, but it got better. See, your words are paving a way for your future. And I say this sometimes people don't understand it, but my thing is shoot for the stars and hit a duck. You know what I'm saying? What's happened? Nothing. And a lot of times when people don't get what they say immediately, they back up and say, well, I guess it doesn't work. But I'm telling you, that tenacious, intense, and I'm not talking about get you into works and, you know, trying to live by formulas of faith, but I'm saying, man, if it's in you, let it out. Because you are a reservoir, have a reservoir in you that's just waiting to be released. Jesus said, he who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, how does the flow of the river take place? Through your lips. See, it, it, when he meant flow, it was, it's going to flow, and that's what happened the day of Pentecost, right? They all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And it's really interesting about how Paul explained speaking in tongues, how important it was, and referenced a scripture in Isaiah 28. And in that scripture context, this is, this is the refreshing this is the place of rest. This is the place. What's the place? Praying in the Holy Ghost. And so, last thing I want to say about this that I think is very important. To be able to access that kind of faith and boldness, I believe what it's doing is getting our soul to align with our born-again spirit by praying in the Holy Spirit. All right? Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So, praying in the Holy Ghost is probably, to me, priority. Um, I, I think that many times when people say, you know what, I just need to believe God, I just need to have a better attitude, I just need to quote some scripture, that's good, but I tell you it's even better. Instead of trying to get your soul all fixed up, relate to your born-again spirit, start praying in tongues. And you pray in tongues for 30 minutes, your ability to speak the word of God and, and to feel close to God, that intimacy with God becomes a natural thing. So you've just been praying in the Holy Ghost. You've been relating to the Holy Spirit by your spirit, letting the flow come out of you just like that. Just like water coming out of a fountain out of you, speaking forth of good, the good things of God. Is this awesome? Yeah. Amen. So I just appreciate you just being who God's made you to be and not being a victim, but being a victor through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God says, there's a miracle in your mouth. That wasn't just something said by an evangelist years ago. That is absolutely true. There's a miracle in your mouth. And I'm going to let the miracles flow out of my mouth today and tomorrow and the next day. And I'm going to speak to the nation concerning what I believe is going to happen. I think, man, April 8th is going to be Passover. Wouldn't it be good if this thing just comes to a close? Amen. Well, my thing is, won't we just say it? Lord, thank you, Lord, for Passover. The death angel passes over. We just declare in the name of Jesus a breakthrough on April 8th. Amen. Someone says, you in the dates? I am this morning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to just keep on going, you know. So l let me get my guitar here, and I want to see if I can just uh, sing to people, um, uh, not only here, but in, the, in, this, uh, in this time of uh, testing. say this too prophetically it doesn't take any faith to believe that things will go wrong because man that guy's bold he's telling us what's going to wrong now he's no more right than a fortune teller we need to see what well. we're going to believe God for the best we're going to prepare for the worst but believe for the best so I hope you're preparing for the best I'm going to ask you, to, at least for this song, just to close your eyes. And I will too. And I'm going to sing what I believe God wants us to hear this morning. <clears throat> There's a new wave of glory rolling over you in the haze out there to bring you through. Let the words of your mouth come forth in time. You will see my hand, so divine. 
Don't be afraid of what is coming down the line I'm the one who's called you You are mine Say my words in faith It's not too late Rise up right now and don't you hesitate Because I'm doing more behind your back Now I am in front of your face I filled you with my amazing grace you're to see things happen right before your eyes Get ready my people for a big surprise Cause it's right here before you You're gonna move in faith I tell you from my heart it's not too late So rise up in the power Of the Holy Ghost Cause I'm your father And I love you the most Oh see What you say In your heart Make a way Oh let the words flow From your lips And like a river coming through I am bringing life I am bringing life through you. You'll be amazed through the haze at everything you'll do. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to sing some songs to people here in the room, but also I'll be singing on the internet. And uh, so if I look you in the eyes here in this room, I'm speaking, singing directly to you. And if it uh, relates to your heart, you who are watching uh, on Facebook, then let it relate to you, okay? Why have you learned all these things through the years? Not just so you say around in your tears or be concerned or be full of fear but rise up in the name of the Lord all those Bible studies and all those teachings true now tell me what are you gonna do don't think I'm gonna leave you high and dry cause you're the very apple of my eye why all these lessons all these things in scripture all oh, going through your mind not just to let you know it's going to be okay, but it's going to be more than fine. So engage in faith and let it go forth. Lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Speak into the darkness, the light will shine. Oh, it's going to prove that you are mine. Oh, it's going to prove that you are mine. You're just not like anyone else It was meant to be before you were born Don't you think you're limited inside Or you're gonna cry Because I made a way for you, my child It's more than you ever ever thought would come to pass. Rise up, my child, and start to have a blast. I love living inside of you, cause you're my daughter. Don't ever think you're gonna be led to the slaughter. Because you have my mantle, authority inside, have my Gonna protect you both day and night. Gonna be with you through the fight. I guarantee it's gonna be more than right. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, what about me? What about me? I've heard you crying. What about me? I wonder if he sees 
or even cares. I'm saying I do, child, and I'm aware of everything you're feeling, everything you hurt, everything that seems to want to deserve. Your heart in fear it says I'm not here, but surprise I am, and I can. What about me? What about me? I've heard you say those words. I was there with you. Isn't that ironic? Cause I was always there. I heard you say, what about me? Well, I say I've given you liberty to be who I have called you to be. Rise up now. And be strong and sing a brand new song. You're delivered from all your enemies. They're under your feet. Isn't that neat? Now proclaim the word that I've given you right here. Cause I'm saying it all so very clear. Your victory is all right for you inside of your soul. Concerning all those things that only you and I know. So don't be thinking, where's God right now? Cause I'm with you all the time. I'm gonna work it out somehow. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, my son. Hear my voice. I put weapons in your left hand and in your right. I taught your hands to battle and your fingers to fight. Oh, you shine the light in the middle of the night. When others say you can't, say you can cause you're my son and I made you a brand new man oh stand strong and faith and speak to the mountain now see it through according to your word put your hand to the plow and don't turn back I'm your father and I've got your back I guarantee you won't suffer lack But say to that mountain be It will listen to you Like you listen to me If you can hear my voice today You're already I want to see things happen Yes, you're going to see Speak into those things And watch them move Speak into these things And watch them move Speak into those things You're going to see them move Great 
it when you start to fascination with the impossible things. I put healing in your heart. I put healing in your hands. More than you've ever known. More than you can understand. But it's according to my plan. I say you can stand in power and might. Cause I filled you with the power of my name. So you will never be the same. And it's gonna be more than you ever thought or dreamed. You're gonna hear my voice and obey It's gonna be oh so cool More than you can say Cause I'm speaking right through you To the hearts of men So they can be renewed and be born again Keep your eyes on the prize and don't shrink back Cause I'm your dad and you like anything to do those things I have called you to do right in the middle of the craziness you're gonna do your best because you're blessed you're not trying to earn a thing just listening to the king and hearing a brand new song that you'll sing listen my son got so much to bring to this world, even though Satan's darts at you are heard. Remember what I've given you, I'm not taking it back. I say you're gonna do more than you ever had before, before you is a wide open door. Thank you, I think about you all the time, it's true. You're precious in my sight, both day and night. I love you with an everlasting love. Oh, I love you with an everlasting love. Even when you were all by yourself, I was there with you. All those times you wondered what was gonna happen to you I had you in my heart I had you in my mind Thinking about you, listen to me all the time And now the great days are ahead Cause I made you the person you always wanted to be. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a good day, isn't it? Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for the Lord God and His goodness. Surely goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy are following. What I said in my word is absolutely true. I'm sticking to your heart like a steadfast glue. The love that I have for you, you're gonna do more than you ever imagined, you'd ever see. It's come to you soon. Absolutely free. The past is gone. You won't see it anymore. So many things for you to explore. Oh, the power of my word 
is inside you Flowing through your soul like a stream Oh my power is working right through you Oh it's born to be born so keen And so exact and so perfectly designed More than ever you thought you'd see Speaking to those things that are right before your heart. Let it be known abroad and here, from shore to shore, forevermore. Keep on singing, keep on speaking. I've given you so much more to explore. Yeah, well, in this room, we got somebody else here. <laughs> you know, it's so good. Uh, I'm going to say something before I sing. Some people are gifted with a smile that, that just breaks through all the pretentious things that other people are trying to persuade you about. And you've got a convincing smile. You know what I'm saying? It says of a virtuous woman in, in Proverbs 31, she smiles at the future, and the teaching of kindness is on her lips. Yes. So God's given you a teaching gift. He's given you a smile that smiles at the future. And uh, it also says that she buys a field and, so, and sells it, which means you have prosperity. And uh, your husband has spoken of and you support him and that's a beautiful thing so today we're going to in this time that we have together thinking about the smile God's given you amen it's joy inexpressible and full of glory there are times that people just don't want you to talk to them and explain things to them they just need a hug and they need a smile and I just declare in the name of Jesus, I'm going to hug people. I don't care <laughs> what the government says. I don't, I'm going to hug my friends. and I'm, I'm, you know, We'll be there for you. you know. Hugs are powerful. And the reason it's so good, there's a lot of different things I've heard, in, even in psychology and stuff. But you need eight hugs just to maintain. Mm -hmm. You need 16 hugs to make progress. So we need to keep this hugging thing going. <laughs> Back off for anybody, okay? So anyway, that's that's what I think. Keep on smiling and don't give up. Keep on speaking and don't shut up. <laughs> Walk into the room and see everything change. Cause I'm working in you. I love living inside of you, smiling through your lips, and through your eyes I'm gonna shine. Oh, don't you know it's true what I'm doing inside of you? Listen, I'm inside and you're not through. You've just begun the fun of doing things that others see and they admire. So keep on looking to my spirit. Cause I'm lifting you higher and higher Oh, keep on thinking about those things That make you smile inside Right now, today you're gonna really go forth In the power of the Lord You're gonna see things you've never seen before Keep on smiling Never you're gonna see things that you've never seen before. There's an open door for you to smile. Let that laughter come out of you. It's bringing healing to those around you. You'll be amazed at all you'll do. You'll be amazed.
pray now. And I hope everybody is just, I hope you're encouraged. I hope that what I share with you today isn't some heavy deal that you've got to go out there and do all this stuff. But, but out of your love relationship with Jesus, let that, let that boldness just come out of you. It says, the wicked flee when no one is pursuing them. But the righteous is bold as the lion. And uh, aren't you glad you know the Word of God? Um, uh, years ago when I had I was being a pastor, I was like 30 years old, so I was probably about just a young guy and, uh, and this person was teaching Sunday school to the little kids. Did anybody ever sing that song? It was from Christ for the Nations. The righteous are bold as a lion, the wicked flee when no one's pursuing them. The righteous. It was a cool song. And so they're in Sunday school and the teacher says to these little kids, who's our enemy? And they're all looking, who's our enemy? And this son of a DPS officer, he finally got, so I'll let you know. And he had talked in, of course, in Central Texas, people, some of them have a thick accent. He says, well, he says, who's our enemy? He says, well, there is the devil, and then there is the wicked flea. <laughs> in other words, if you think the devil's bad, you better not, you know, ha have that wicked flea come out of you. At you in a, a dark alley, he'll clean your plow, you know. He thought that wicked flea was a lot worse than the, than the devil, you know. So. <laughs> but anyway, whether it's a wicked flea or the devil, you have authority over him and over it. And I would still encourage you, as I am going to do myself, when I prophesy and when I declare good things over our nation, to treat this virus as a personality, right. not a thing, but a personality, and as the president calls it, the invisible enemy. So it's an enemy. It's not just a thing. It has a name to it. And every name that is named is under the feet of Christ. And you're the body of Christ, so all things are under your feet because you're in him. In Jesus' name. So, Father, I thank you right now for an overflow of faith that's coming inside of us, Lord. And let us, Lord, just be uh, just ready to hear your voice and, and to follow you and just to speak and to do the things that you've called us to do. And we're going to see miracles take place. We declare over our nation the blessing of the Lord. And the glory of God is filling our nation. And people are coming to Christ by the thousands. And we declare that this enemy is... He's, it's, it's over. It's broken. And the, and the uh, drastic desires of this thing have been destroyed in the name of Jesus. And we declare victory over it today because you said that we are to speak those things into the atmosphere, to speak those things that be not as though they are. So, we, Lord, we know what it says it's doing, but we're going to say right now, stop in the name of Jesus. We declare it to be done on earth, even as it is in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.